This here is a demonstration called photochemical smog. Uh, a lot of people are very concerned about the environment and want to talk about the environment and try to understand what may be going on in various problems with our environment. And so this is uh, a demonstration to try to show how smog can get formed and what happens there. And what I have here is I have a clear flask and I have a rubber stopper and I have a copper coil. Now the copper coil, I actually used a uh, piece of electrical wiring that was solid copper and I stripped the insulation off of it to get a coil like this because I needed some rigidness to my coil so I could wind it and get it inside. So here is my coil and what I want to do is generate some ozone inside this flask. To generate the ozone, I'm going to flush the flask first of all with oxygen. So we have an oxygen cylinder here and we're going to take this out and we're going to flush this with oxygen. We'll see if we got much flow yet. Now we got flow. So I'm flushing the flask with oxygen. Okay, that's going to be a good flush. Okay, so I've got the flushing with oxygen. Okay, let me put this out of the way. Okay, and we are going to wrap some aluminum foil around the flask. And what we're going to try and do is use some electrical energy to try to generate some ozone, because inside the flask we have oxygen, O2. And we're going to zap that with some voltage, put some potential, and try to get the oxygens to change and create ozones. And we are going to ground by connecting to the outside aluminum. So we'll try to ground there. Okay, and now we have a Tesla coil. And we're going to zap the copper at the top, our copper electrode. So I'll zap the copper. When I zap the copper, I'll build a potential along the copper wire. The aluminum foil is separated a little bit from it, so that'll create a potential between that and the aluminum. The aluminum is grounded, and that will cause some energy in there so that O2s can break and become O's. Those O's will connect with some O2s, and we will get O3, ozone. So, we're going to zap away. Now, the time of zapping, I really don't know how long one really has to zap. I generally zap 20, 30 seconds to guarantee it, or think that I'm going to be at least pretty good with it. Give it a little extra. Look at that energy. And I think we probably by now should have ozone in that flask. So let's disconnect the ground. Let's take away our aluminum foil. Now, we already, originally, we had O2. We couldn't see it. I believe we have O3 now. We can't see it. Both are invisible. Lemon peels have a chemical in them called limonene. Limonene is a fairly large unsaturated hydrocarbon and limonene can get oxidized by ozone. So I've got some peels here. What I'm going to do is 
break their surface just a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to drop the limonene in and put a new stopper on top. And we're going to see what happens inside the flask. So, there we go. And now we will see what will occur. And you see coming up from the peel, there is a reaction going on between the limonene, which is an unsaturated hydrocarbon, and ozone. Similar to what happens in LA and other places with automobile exhausts, which are unsaturated hydrocarbons, some of it, and they react. Now, ozone is going to add O's to my limonene, and it's going to make what is called a carboxylic acid. It will make an acid. That's what happens when we get smog. Smog often smells sharp in your nose and so forth because smog generally is acid like. It's got some acid molecules. So we have created an acid here. And it's a carboxylic acid. Now, it's pretty long-chained acid. It's an organic acid, pretty long-chained. Uh, should I lift that and tilt it just a little and see what we end up occurring here? Yeah, it's still yeah, it's not bad as it is. One additional thing you can do to get a point across to advanced classes is that we teach them about acids and organic acids. The strong organic acids are the ones that only have a few car uh, carbons on them. Formic acid, acetic acid. They ionize very well. When you get more acids, they don't ionize very well. For example, steric acid is basically like a, a fat type of thing, and it doesn't ionize well. What I can do is add a little water to this, and show you what happens to my smog. I've added some water. I can shake. But does the smog disappear? No. And if we have smog in LA and stuff and it rains, it's got to rain an awful lot. It doesn't want to dissolve very well. And so here's our water. Here is our acid, it's still there, and that is an acid cloud that we have.